So here we go. We're starting off with the case. This is the original case that's in pretty beat up shape because it's gotten a lot of use over the years. Uh, stickers I put on there. <laughs> Anybody locally knows who that is. The latches all stay up except for this one here. It's kind of like a limp wing. But uh, let's take a look inside. So this is, like I said, the original case. Looks pretty good for as old as it is. Let's see what's inside the compartment here. This still works, obviously. And oh yeah, <laughs> old picture of me. This is a pitch pipe. This is how I used to tune. When you have no money, that's what you do. I don't even, probably doesn't even work. Let's see. Okay, well, three out of the six work. That's really old. You know who made this super pitch pipe? Who knows? Anyhow, that's the case. So, let's get on to the uh, big reveal. Well, okay, before you start crying, this guitar obviously was not originally white, but uh, 1980 or whatever year it was, I bought this in 79, used, and uh, when you have no money, or a pot to piss in as they say, you do what you have to do. So I wanted a white Explorer because if Paul Stanley from Kiss had a white Explorer, so I was like, I gotta have a white Explorer. So a friend of mine knew somebody. And at the time, there was no vintage market. There was really nothing. There wasn't eBay. You don't know how much these things are gonna be worth someday. If you have that kind of hindsight, you would never do the things you've done to the guitars. But like I said, when you're young and you have no money, you do what you have to do. So I did manage to, you know, convey the message like do not erase the serial number, do not paint over it. So we put a little spot here. As you can see, the serial number is still there. Um, now before I turn this over and probably make you cry even more, <laughs> I'm kind of intercut a little picture right here that's kind of kind of give it away. But uh, the parts I'll show you in a second are all original from this guitar. And uh, we'll put that in right here. So as you can see, these are the original pieces. Appears like I'm missing something. I'm missing the other post for this somewhere. It's probably in a box somewhere. I thought I had them all together. The original nut, and the original bridge pieces. So you can see I put red thread around here because this uh, little retaining wire always vibrated, so I wrapped it in thread. But uh, here's the original box from the Kaler. Pretty crazy, the template, everything. Still in here. So, now that I've given away what I'm about to reveal, don't cry too hard. Okay, so you probably have a good idea what was done to this guitar before I flip it over. But, uh, again, you know, I've had this guitar for a long time. Really don't play it much. Um, I did some things that I'll explain when I flip it over. And uh, we'll go from there, but here we are. Try not to cry. Promise, there's no crying in rock and roll. And there it is. I had a Kaler installed. Because a Floyd Rose wouldn't fit on the thickness body. But I will say this Kaler is a phenomenal piece of work. I mean, it stays in tune. It never had an issue. It's obviously a little pitted. These are the original knobs. Uh, I'm probably going to say that the uh, pots in that were probably replaced at one point because I did have EMGs in this at one point. So, this is not an original pickup, but it is a Gibson pickup. I think it's a 490T. This is the original, um, I think. Could be wrong. But, uh, yeah, it's white and it has a Kaler. But, you know, original tuners... As you saw in the other interlaced picture or video, now has a brass nut. 
And uh, this guitar has always been great. I put scrap locks on it at one point. So I'm sure I have the original knobs, the original electronics somewhere. But the original pick guard. These are probably not the original rings because they crack and break. But I'm sure I have them all somewhere in a box. Um, the thing with these pickups at the time, uh, I had a friend that was, you know, brilliant and said, hey, you know, you can take the covers off of those pickups and expose the coils. I was like, really? Yeah, man, everybody does it. So I proceeded to uh, try to take the cover off. Little did I know that it was like molded in and I totally destroyed the pickup. So I believe I still have one of the original pickups. Uh, I don't know. I've got boxes full of old parts and pieces. But uh, this is my first Gibson, a 1978 Explorer. It played a lot of gigs when I was young and it never really let me down, but it's just something uh, I don't think I'll ever part with. And uh, I'm sorry that I disappointed people and you purists, but you know, at the time when you have no money, you do what you have to do. You start doing songs that require a tremolo, so you have a Kaler installed. But that's my guitar, and I'm sticking to it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Hit that notification bell. You know, I don't make any money off of this stuff, so you have to have a ridiculous amount of subscribers and viewers to even start making money. And uh, maybe we'll do another one of these. Uh, it'll be either my second or third Gibson, because I still have that, too. Anyways, see you around. Check out my music. It's all over the streaming services which is basically free for me because I don't make any money off of it but if you want to be really cool go buy a song download a song even one song makes a big big difference than streaming for sure but any musician will tell you the same thing so there you go thanks see ya